This here is my Nano Cube Terrarium, which has just passed 180 days old. It's been absolutely thriving, but before taking a look inside, let me take you back six months ago to when I made it. I used this 20 cm cube aquarium and started off by adding a drainage layer. For this, I chose to use Lika as it's very lightweight and porous, making it perfect for drainage. I spread it out to make sure there's no high or low points. Next, I went on to add the substrate barrier. For this, I used window screen mesh and the purpose of this layer is to stop the substrate from getting down into the drainage layer. Talking about substrate, here's the mix that I used. I used this mix for pretty much all my terrarium builds and it hasn't let me down. I only poured in a small amount to start with before working on the hardscape. I stuck a small piece of post-it note to the back of the tank as my idea was to make a path that would lead up to this point. Having the post-it note there is a great visual reference when making a path as it'll help you make sure that you don't block it up with hardscape or plants. For the hardscape I decided on some black lava rock and I even had a few pieces which still had some live moss growing on them. I started with the rocks at the front and built up the substrate higher and higher as I went. I came up with this layout for the rocks and as you can see it has a nice path which leads to the endpoint. I certainly wasn't done with the hardscape yet as it was time to add some spiderwood. It did take me some time to decide on a layout I was happy with, but here's what I came up with. The next step was locking the spiderwood down with the super glue and tissue method. With the hardscape complete, it was finally time to start bringing the terrarium to life with plants. I started off with a Boston fern. After taking it out of the pot and removing all the soil, I split it into multiple pieces and then planted it inside the terrarium. These long tweezers came in really handy here. The next plant I wanted to add was this asparagus fern. I love the fine detailed leaves on this plant and they really do resemble miniature trees. The last fern I wanted to add was this tricolour fern. It has beautiful leaves in the shade of green, red and bronze. For the path down the centre of the terrarium I chose to use some Monte Carlo. It's an aquatic plant that grows great in terrariums so long as the humidity is kept high. Sticking with the theme of aquarium plants, I went on to add some Anubius and Bucephalandra throughout the tank. These plants are epithytes, so I made sure not to plant them in the substrate. Instead, I wedged them in gaps and cracks throughout the tank. Next, I wanted to cover the foreground of the terrarium with moss. I chose to use Java moss, and I'm not sure if this was the best idea for this tank, and you'll see why later. After cutting it up into small pieces, I used some long tweezers to place it on top of the substrate in the foreground. After finishing the planting off with some ficus quercifolio cuttings, I went on to add the springtails. As I'm sure you already know, these tiny bugs will keep the terrarium clean by eating mould and decaying matter. After introducing the springtails, I went on to give the terrarium a good spray down and then the mini ecosystem was complete. I really liked how it looked on day one, but it was nothing compared to how it looked two months later. After two months, it was very clear that this mini ecosystem was thriving. All the moss and plants had established really well and they were all showing signs of new growth. The springtails were also hard at work and there was very little signs of any mould whatsoever which is great. At this stage my favourite thing about this tank had to be this tiny fern that popped up out the moss and these beautiful leaves on this begonia. I also really liked how the path of Monte Carlo had grown and filled in the space. With the two month update complete I placed the lid back on and left it for 120 days. Here we are four months later and once again this nanocube terrarium has completely transformed. This tank's been sitting on a rack under an LED light and I've only sprayed it once or twice in the past four months. Now let's take a closer look inside. As you can see the Boston fern and the tricolour fern have been absolutely thriving and they're taking up a lot of space at the top of the tank. When peering inside you can still get a glimpse of the healthy plant growth underneath the canopy of ferns. Although all the plants underneath look really healthy at the moment, I'm almost certain that the ferns are going to continue to grow and they'll eventually cover the entire top of the tank. This is far from ideal as without light, the moss and plants underneath will stand no chance. All hope's not lost as this is an easy problem to fix with a quick bit of terrarium maintenance. I'm starting by cleaning off any algae or dead plant matter that's on the glass. Next, I'm breaking out the long scissors and getting to work trimming down the ferns. This was quite hard to do as I really did like how they look growing over the top of the tank, but it definitely had to be done if I want this tank to be successful in the long term. With the ferns cut back, there's so much more light going into the tank which the plants and moss would definitely be grateful for. On the topic of moss, you've probably seen just how much the java moss has grown at the front. 
This is what I meant earlier when I said I wasn't sure if Jarvan Moss was the right moss for the tank as it grows vertically instead of horizontally. That being said, you can train it to grow more horizontally so that's what I'm going to do. I trimmed it with some scissors and then pushed it back down onto the substrate. Now that I can actually see the plants underneath, I'm going around and removing any leaves which don't look the best. I'm still really liking the Monte Carlo path down the centre and it's even got some oak leaf creeping fig growing in there as well. Now let's talk about some of the creatures living inside this ecosystem. To my surprise, there's a small population of these tiny cute garlic snails. I didn't actually introduce these myself and they must have came in on some plants, but they're definitely a welcome surprise. This one here even has a tiny springtail riding on its back. Talking about springtails, they've also been thriving inside this terrarium. The majority of them do spend their time in the substrate, but I do see a good few of them once I start looking a bit closer. One thing I know for sure is that this terrarium wouldn't be as successful as it is if it wasn't for these tiny, hard-working bugs. At this point, I'd usually give the terrarium a light spray down, but it doesn't actually look like it needs one, so I'm not going to do that today. All that's left to do is place the lid on, and that's the maintenance complete. It's been amazing watching this terrarium transform over the past six months. Before ending the video, I do want to say a massive thank you for 100,000 subscribers. I'm unbelievably grateful and do want to thank every one of you that's following the channel and watching the videos.